الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقال سبحانه وتعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون we begin today as a reminder of taqwa and a reminder to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us in Ramadan, in Shawwal, in Shaban, in every month of the year. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our Rabb. What does it mean Rabb? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know Rabb has a meaning of Lordship. Like the owner, Rabb al-Bayt. The owner, Rabb al-Mahal, the owner of the store. But Rabb also has a connection with Tarbiya. Huh? Murabbi, a Rabb. So here, when we look at the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa tells us to make dua for our parents, Qur, yani say, make dua, rahm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbir, hamhuma, I'll have mercy upon them, kama Rabbayani. The way they did Tarbiya. Rabbayani, Tarbiya of me when I was saghira, when I was young. Here we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah have mercy on them, kama as they did the tarbiyah for me with the same root word from Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. He is the one that is the master of all of the universes. He is the, the, the one that sustains all of the universes. And He provides a, a sustenance for us, He provides a rizq for us as our Rabb. Now, now think about this, when you are a parent to a child, a part of your responsibility is to make sure your children have shelter and food, right? That's a part of their upbringing. If you are a parent and you don't work, and you don't provide food, and your children are hungry, and you don't provide a, a, a shelter for them even though you have the ability and they're homeless, nobody considers you a good parent. Right? Because you did not fulfill a part of the responsibility. And our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that does our tarbiyah. He provides us risk. He provides us shelter. He provides us sense and sustenance. And when we look at the fitan, the fasad, dahar al fasad, and the, the corruption that comes in the land, it is not because of Allah. Huh? Why? Because of the fil bar wal bahar, on land and ocean. Because of the action from Aidi and Nas, from the action, from what has been kasabat, what we have reaped from our actions. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wants good for us. He only gives us good. He gave us such a beautiful planet in a perfect balance with enough food for everybody. But what happens with us is we don't follow the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets. We have greed, hasad. Huh? You go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you know you can't eat more than this, but you fill up your plate anyway. And you know you're full, alhamdulillah, Allah gave you, but now I paid for it, I'm gonna stuff myself. Now I'm full, but I still want the taste. So I'm gonna eat more and more and more. And then when that food is left, nobody else will eat now. Oh, ew, somebody else ate. La, throw it away. Every day, how much food do we waste? There's enough food to feed everybody. It's not that we don't have enough food. Why are people starving in the world? Because of the actions of people. And because of the action of few, the many are harmed. 
because of our greed. And even this facade, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to be. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to taste a little bit of what our actions produce. Huh? In the end of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that maybe they will, irji'oon, they will come back. Even this facade is only so people can come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can see that when you don't follow the sharia, ah, when you don't follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you don't pay your zakat, when you don't give sadaqah, when you make israf, when you have hasad, then a few will take the resources and everybody will see the suffering. We're not communists here. That's not the way. It's not that everybody just get, no, we are Muslim. The Sharia is our way. And the Sharia sets a perfect balance. And if we follow it like as we did in the past, in the times of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, even though there were droughts, he would find ways to get to the people what they needed. In the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, tariqh, history is a witness. History is a witness. That in those times, there was such barakah, there was such blessings that people be walking around wanting to give away sadaqah, give away zakat. People are like, Alhamdulillah, we're good. Hmm? Today, imagine in America, in a first world country, in the West, if somebody walks down the street and says, this is government money, free money, take it. If we would have riots trying to keep people back. People would be shooting each other and killing over the money. Because the hasad, the greed, the jealousy, the shuh is so much. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this perfect tarbiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, kutiba Now we have Ramadan coming. Wake up to this. Ramadan is coming. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained the siyam, the fasting upon us. Kama as it was kataba, ordained upon those before you. Huh? But then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end it with? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you might become people of taqwa. This is tarbiya. See, there is the tarbiya that has to do with risk. And Allah gives it to everybody. Kafir have risk. Muslim has risk. There are Muslims that are wealthy. Walhamdulillah. And there are Muslims that are poor. Walhamdulillah. There are kuffar that are rich. And there are kuffar who are poor. And there are kuffar sometimes they're richer than the Muslim in dunya. Wealth-wise, money-wise. They eat in plates of gold and silver. You see these uh, reality shows and they show this house and they've got all these fancy things and, and they've got yeah, any silverware of gold and silver and they're eating. And the Muslim, even if we become rich, we can't live like that. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa forbid it. And what did he tell us? Lahum fi dunya wa lakum fil akhirah. Hadith Sahih. What a beautiful statement. Let them have it in dunya. Let them live it up. But lakum for you, it's in the akhirah. Even in dunya, Allah gives you a good life. Alhamdulillah. But in the Akhirah, Allah has kept the best for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us that if the value of this world, if, no, even if it was the value of the wing of a mosquito. Imagine a mosquito, if you have a mosquito in your house, you kill it. Who cares about a mosquito? Eh? Nobody likes mosquitoes. Eh? Imagine not even the mosquito, but the wing of a mosquito. Who has any value? If you went to the store and you wanted to sell the wing of a mosquito, you think anybody will buy it from you? No. No. So here, even if the value of this world was like the wing of the mosquito, Allah would not have given the kuffar a sip of water to drink. Allah doesn't love kuffar. Don't, don't get it twisted here. But Allah is razaq. He gives the rizq. He gives this opportunity that everybody has. But then he gives a special favor. A favor for all of mankind and then khasan. We'll talk about it. And I'm, I'm saying this because Ramadan is coming. Huh? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the Prophet alayhi salatu salam? He is rahmatul lil alameen. Ma arsalnaka. I did not send you illa except as a mercy for all of mankind. All of mankind benefits from the Prophet 
They may not realize it. The nations before us, now pay attention. This is not just for the Kafir or the Mu'min. The nations before us in the time of Nuh السلام, in the time of Lut السلام, in the time of uh, Salih السلام, and these other Umam, Tamud, Ad, right? In these times, as long as the Prophet was there making an effort on the people, they were safe. And when they didn't listen, that Prophet would make a dua and the people would be destroyed. Right? Except who Allah saved with the Prophet. The, the non-believers there, when they had their time and they didn't listen, they would be destroyed. Sometimes locally, like Fir'aun and his army. And sometimes the whole area, like Lut, Qawm Lut. And sometimes globally, like Nuh, alayhum salam They made the dua and the destruction. Now the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the same dua. He had the ability to make the same dua when the Quraysh was harming him in Ta'if, in, in Badr, in Uhud, and all these times. He could have made the dua. At the time of end of his life, he could have made that dua. But he didn't. He saved that dua. That, that dua that is accepted, he saved it. For when? I'll tell you, inshallah. So today, kuffar are walking on this earth because of the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not make against them. He didn't. He made dua, oh Allah, don't let my nation be destroyed in one sweep. He protected us with his dua. Alayhi salatu salam. That messenger of Allah is a special mercy for the believers. Huh? In Surah Tawbah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rahmatul lil mu'mineen. He is a special mercy for the believers. Especially. So there is the general mercy for alameen, yes. But for the believers, khasan. This is a gift from Allah. But you don't appreciate the gift until you know the value of the gift. Hmm? You don't appreciate a gift until you know the value of the gift. You know, there is a, a atar, there is a smell, it's called oud. Most of you know what oud is. And oud can be very expensive sometimes. You get the khas, yani the real, no, no chemicals, nothing real, right? It's expensive, very nice. But you give it to somebody who doesn't know what oud is. Here you go in America, you go on the street, you see somebody and you're like, hey, here you go. And they're like, hmm, what's this? Car oil? They might be like, oh, it smells nice, whatever. But they don't know the value of it. Until you give it to somebody who knows the value, then they appreciate it. If you take a diamond, you know the value of a diamond, you take a big diamond, right? You get uh, whatever, I don't know how many carats a big diamond is, big diamond. And you give it to a little kid in kindergarten or, or, or preschool. A little kid's playing in the sand toys. He sees this diamond, he'll throw it, go pick up a toy. Why? Because he doesn't know the value of the diamond. Today, we don't know the value of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't know the value of the sunnah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, if you want to benefit from your Ramadan, the first thing is obey the sunnah. Go back to the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, people come up to me and they tell me, I don't feel Ramadan, like I'm not feeling it. Yeah, I'm fasting, but I'm not feeling it. Yeah, I'm not drinking, I'm not eating, but I'm not feeling it. Well, what are you putting into it? Are you watching TV all night? Are you listening to music all day? Are you out there doing everything you were doing before Ramadan? Then that is not the sunnah of Ramadan. You may fulfill the fara'id of not eating and drinking and inshallah not backbiting and lying, those things, but you're not going to benefit from it until you follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So when you fast in the way that the Prophet sallam showed us the fasting, that's when you will benefit from the fasting. So understand that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa how was he in Ramadan? 
How was his Qiyam al-Layl? Not just the Taraweeh that we're trying like Imam, I hope he hurries up, no. How did he enjoy that Salah? How did he enjoy that fasting? How did he control his desires? Other than just eating and drinking. And when we bring that into our life, when we go into Ramadan, putting into it, Ya Allah, make this a means of tarbiyah for me, so I can be from the people of Taqwa. That was the purpose of Ramadan. When we go into it with that, then we'll come out with it cleansed. This is the tarbiyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for us. He makes mawasim, yani the, the, the times of tiski of cleansing us. See, the parent, one responsibility was the food and the shelter and things, yes. But then a parent is not just that. If some parent has a house and has food and then doesn't talk to their children and doesn't give them any nasiha, doesn't give them any advice, doesn't remind them of salah, doesn't remind them of fasting, doesn't teach them, doesn't make them go to school, doesn't push them for anything. Just like, hey, here's the food. There's some money there. This is the house key. I'm out. See you when you're 18. There are people like that. Yeah. Now, is that a good parent? No. Because a good parent will tell their children, this is haram, this is halal, this is good, this is bad. Did you finish your homework? Did you pray? Did you fast? Did you read your Quran? Did you do this? Did you do that? And that child might be like, why is this parent bothering me? But then when they get older, they make dua, oh Allah, bless them. They were the ones that, that gave me that tarbiyah. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loving towards us. Allah gives us these, these times like Ramadan where you're not eating and drinking so you can control your desires the rest of the year. Not so you're just hungry and thirsty. So you can be reminded of the Akhirah. So you can be reminded about the hunger of our brothers and sisters around the world. So you can thank Allah for the blessings that you have. And if you miss that opportunity, it's your fault. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that perfect example as a guide, the Prophet alayhi salatu If you go into Ramadan without Tawheed, you go into Ramadan making shirk, calling on other than Allah, making bid'ah, then you are not going into Ramadan to benefit from Ramadan. Even if the apparent, you are crying and making dua, but the inside is filthy. That's why we have to cleanse ourselves from these diseases before Ramadan to benefit from Ramadan. It's like a plate. When you have a plate, before you can put good tasty food to eat, you have to clean the plate. Imagine you go to a restaurant and they bring your plate and it has rotting food on it and it has khinzir, the, the pig on it and the filthiest meat on it. And then they bring you really good food and put it on top of it. Will you eat it? No. No. But when your heart is fulfilled with these kinds of diseases, when the Iman, the Quran, the Salah, the Ramadan comes, it, 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 it's, there's no place for it. You have to cleanse it before you go into it. I want to end just with a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam. Who was the one that stayed up at night and made dua for you? Who was the one that prayed until his feet والسلام, would crack and bleed, making dua for me and you? Who was the one that would be making dua for, for this ummah? Ya Allah, ummati, ummati, my ummah. Who was the one that wanted to meet us? Said, I want to meet my brothers. Those that believe in me without having seen me. Who is the one that on that day of judgment where everybody is nafsi nafsi, myself, myself, he will be saying, Ummati, Ummati. Who is the one that when the people go to Adam alayhi salam and he tells them, leave me today. And when they go to Ibrahim alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam, all those Anbiya will say, not today. I'm worried about myself. Who is the one that we will end up with? Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one that will tell you that day, I am the one, come to me. The one that saved that dua I mentioned earlier for that day, to make dua for me and you. 
Who is the one that will go into sujood? Such a sujood never seen before. Sujood so long that our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, raise your head Muhammad, what do you want? He will say, Allah, not, not forgive me and my family and my kids. No, my ummah, forgive my ummah, forgive my ummah. Allah will forgive the part of the ummah. This much of the ummah, no more, more of the ummah, no more. Keep in sujood, begging Allah until Allah forgives us. Whose shifa is that? That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How dare we leave his sunnah? How dare we question his sunnah? How dare we see a hadith sahih and say, my madhab, my people, my nation, my traditions. Forget your traditions. Forget your country. Forget your, your culture. Follow that sunnah of alayhi salatu salam. Don't exaggerate. Don't go to ulu like the Jews. But don't make tricks like the Yahud. Stay upon al-kitab wa sunnah. And the next time somebody tells you, this is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you reject it. Then know that you will be from those that will be pushed away from the Yahud. The next time you justify a bid'ah, the next time you see a bid'ah, but you want to justify it, the next tariqah you want to take over the tariqah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the next time you take a way of dhikr over the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a way of salah over the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then know on the hadith of Sahih that the people will come on the day of Qiyamah, the Hawd, and Rasul sallam will want to give them from the Hawd, from the pond, and the malaika will push them away. Imagine if that's me and you, they will push them away, say, Oh, my son of Allah, you don't know what they did after you left. The bid'ah, the innovations they brought, they will not be allowed to drink from it. So upon us is the obedience to Al-Quran, Kalam Allah, and a sunnah, min ahadith al-sahiha, from the way of Mustafa, alayhi salatu salam. Amantu anna al-akhirah لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية